We're asked to find the volume of the solid bounded by the elliptical paraboloid given here in the planes x equals five, y equals four, and the coordinate planes. So we'll find this volume using a double integral. So we're going to integrate our paraboloid over the region defined by x equals five and y equals four in the coordinate planes, which means the region of integration would be from zero to five for x and from zero to four for y, which means this rectangular region here in the xy plane is the region of integration. Before we set up our double integral, let's look at this graphically. So here's the graph of the paraboloid. And again, our goal here is to find the volume under this paraboloid above the xy plane over the region of integration, which is a rectangle that we just defined. If we zoom in on the region of integration, we get a much better view. So in blue, we see the graph of our paraboloid only over the region of integration, which again is the rectangular region from x equals zero to five and y equals zero to four. So when we find the volume under the paraboloid, we're finding the volume here in this region here, again, bounded by the paraboloid and the xy plane over this rectangular region. So going back to our work, let's go ahead and set this up as a double integral. So the integrand function is going to be the paraboloid. We need to decide on the order of integration. Let's integrate first with respect to x. So we'll integrate with respect to x from zero to five. And then we'll integrate with respect to y. With respect to y, we'll integrate from zero to four. So now we integrate with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So we'd have five x plus, here we'd have four times x to the third divided by three, or four thirds x cubed. And then we integrate three y squared, we're treating y as a constant. So we have three y squared times x, or three x y squared. Now we evaluate this antiderivative at five, then zero, and then find the difference. So when x is five, we would have five times five plus four thirds times five cubed plus three times five times y squared minus when x is zero, we have five times zero plus four thirds times zero cubed plus three times zero times y squared. Notice all these terms here would be zero. So we're left with the integral from zero to four of, here we have five squared plus four thirds times five cubed. That comes out to 575 thirds. Then we have plus 15 y squared. And now we need to go with respect to y. So we'd have 575 thirds y. And then we'd have plus 15 times y cubed divided by three which gives us five y cubed. Let's finish this on the next slide. So when y is four, we have 575 thirds times four, and then plus five times four cubed. And when y is zero, notice how this would be zero and so would this. So 575 thirds times four comes out to 2300 thirds. And then we have plus five times four cubed is equal to 320, or 320 over one. So obtaining a common denominator, which would be three, we'd multiply here by three over three. So the sum comes out to 3260 thirds or as a decimal, this would be approximately 1,086.6667. And again, because this is volume, we could say cubic units. So again, going back to our graph one last time, we just found the volume, let's pause this, under this blue paraboloid over this region, bounded by the xy plane, which is this solid here. I hope you found this helpful.